You've tuned in to the Hawks View. I'm in Glastonbury. It's 2021, October. Over the last few months, I've been asked about the source of the template information. Where am I getting my information? Who am I channeling? How do I receive these codes? I'm not channeling, nor am I actually receiving codes. I'm retrieving them. Jeeva and I have been unpacking the template in its entirety for over 30 years. My book, Wallbridger, makes it clear that the full body of work that is the template didn't land out of the blue from some external source. I chose to call this body of work the template because the word is a term for a foundation, an original pattern or structure, a blueprint, an essential substructure upon which the energetic organization of the superstructure can develop. The template establishes the primary elemental blueprint from which autonomous involution grows and matures according to each individual's soul identity. The template is a model of restoration, the mechanics of which ultimately re-establishes the human life form as the manifestation of its original blueprint. This is going to initiate a process of release and renewal, as it unavoidably isolates the quintessential identity of the authentic individual from his, her projected persona that has developed as a behavioral response to a fear-based paradigm. It does not replace that identity in any way. It is simply the reestablishment of a vital core energy system. There is no philosophy involved, no belief system you need to take on. Just the workings of the human computational system experiencing feedback from the true continuum, as it was originally designed to do prior to genetic modification. The information that has accompanied the presentation of the template, whether on film, on CDs, or at workshops, is information that explains the higher physics of creation that involves the electromagnetic energy supply delivered by the circuitry that is reconnected, and the details of the experiment on the human race that at every level of our existence has been going on for thousands of years. One that includes the modification of the DNA, an experiment that is now entering its final phase. Worldbridger revealed that gathering the information and the codes involved looking and feeling deeply into the human condition. The template emerged and came to light within a tapestry, a complex, tangled, sometimes messy, often exhilarating tapestry of life experiences. The book was published in 2007, 14 years ago at which time we were working with seven codes. We are now offering 16, the complete hologram, the total holonom. Between then and now, a lot has been realized and integrated. We lived the template in the mountains of Bali mostly and in the Australian rainforest, both of which honored an extraordinary environment in which to be isolated from distractions and socio-political structures. The abundance of the natural world ensured we stayed attuned to the higher physics of creation. The frequency and connectivity supported the process of bringing the whole system into focus. All the while we were connecting circuits as each code is experienced before it is translated into language and geometry. The time spent in Australia 
gifted us with several multidimensional experiences in that incandescent way that the Australian Dreamtime initiates through its incredibly vibrant and powerful land. As consciousness expands, as it flows through the understanding of the land and through cosmic order. During time spent there, we experienced several episodes of embodying the full spectrum of the human prior to genetic modification. These events brought us to an ever more expanding understanding of the holonomic model we were working with. It was the primordial resonance of that land that supported us to experience and retrieve Code 8 in 2012. A code that affirmed the full genetic blueprint to be a field of conscious awareness that is in primordial soul resonance with the supreme organizing principle of the galactic core and the codes embedded in its density waves. Waves that calibrate our identity to the eternal constant, to the true continuum. We are an immortal race operating in a mutant and tropic paradigm because we chose to do so. Recently, I was speaking with a close friend who has read World Bridger at least twice, and even he wasn't completely clear as to the source of the template information. So I feel now is the time to clarify the exact event that led to where we are now. The point at which the template began to emerge. This is a good time to go into it and make it super clear. As now, more than ever, the clarification of the source of the system and the way in which it was realized and unraveled actually shines a light on the present global situation on the manipulation of human consciousness, and now more than ever, on the modification of the human gene code. Considering we are now being coerced into another phase of that experiment. As far as the circuitry, the codes, and the geometry, the system was all reverse engineered from one event, one experience, that took over 30 years to decipher, to unfold, and reconstruct layer upon layer into an organic, live, vibrant system. One that anyone could interact with. Even those who have no full understanding of the quantum infrastructure of the system, the physics of it, but they can feel its integrity simply through its frequency the frequency that has seeped into the language and pulses from the geometry. This one catalytic event was an experience that confirmed the knowledge of the true human potential that is stored as memory in the cerebral cortex. The template codes form a mirror hologram, a holonomic system of that potential that we all have as memory. And as you enter into it, as you interface with it, you experience your own resonant feedback from it, because you are it. And it is that that initiates the reconnections of your circuitry. There were several circumstances that prepared us for that defining event. Some I shared in the book and some that were not because they were too devastatingly personal to reveal. Suffice to say, the entire two years of initiations leading up to the event loosened any residual sense of self that could not accept the unacceptable, could not embrace the art of the impossible. That event is written of in the seventh chapter of World Bridger, Encounter on Green Mountain. That is the chapter that is most often the one that people want to discuss with us. I imagine it is primarily because it included in the chapter our meeting with two second generational reptilian humanoids. 
we came face to face with them that day. Undoubtedly, that's impressive. And it is described in full in the chapter. It was an attempted abduction by two master hypnotists using advanced technology. The implications of that meeting are also connected to our subsequent understanding of the experiment that has been taking place in this version of Earth for thousands of years. I believe the details of that meeting will be more fully appreciated at this particular time as the technology that was used is the same technology being used now at this present global situation we're facing. However, it was not that meeting that impacted us the most and it's not what I'm going to be focusing on today but I will do at some point in the future. Because it was that encounter that triggered the experience that took place immediately afterwards. An event that shaped our lives, our consciousness, our perception of ourselves, and the nature of this, our present reality. It initiated our ability to experience ourselves interfacing with this earth in her transcendent manifestation. Our earth as a fractal aspect of the Mahagaya Tantra of creation. This reality we shifted into on the mountain was the visual, audible, tangible feedback of the counter-resonant realm that parallels the human blueprint prior to its genetic modification. This realm exists now. The geometric energetic coordinates of this realm exists within your cerebral cortex and is embedded in every cell of your being as an iconic point of reference within your perception of space-time. Your DNA is encrypted with a geometric molecular light code capable of summoning through resonance its counter-environmental feedback system. However, that system is dormant and temporarily inoperative due to the modifications that have been placed on it. However, it cannot be eradicated. It can be resurrected and reactivated. On that day on the mountain, there is no doubt that the primary adjustment that took place in order for us to experience ourselves within that realm was that we had spontaneously not only connected all our circuitry, we also integrated and synthesized every nuance of the full spectrum of the source codes delivered by those circuits, creating around us a toroiding sphere of light code information. On that day, we saw around us a field of light, a sphere, an interactive, hyperconnective, holonomic system of coherent data, our light body matrix. An experience that has been repeated to a certain degree several times since, particularly from the seventh code onwards and dramatically around the eleventh code. The geometry of the 16th code is the ultimate representation of the complete structure of that field of information we found ourselves at the center of on the mountain. It was the geometry of the field of light that surrounded us when we shifted into that transcendent realm. It is a sphere. The sphere is the most comprehensive form of consciousness. It is the form on which we live, the eye with which we see, the form that brings life, light, and warmth, the form that fills the heavens and transmits day and night, the stellar radiance that animates our blueprint. It holds within its matrix the dawn of the universe. 
It is the primary seed and the primary egg of creation, the beginning. Imagine a sphere constructed of a multi-dimensional labyrinth of layers and layers of interactive, co-creative, geometric fractals that create a system of hyperholography, a system that ignites and amalgamates all other existing fractal codes into one unified field of total coherence. A sphere of light data, a multi-toroidal fountain capable of interfacing with the true continuum. That is the sole covenant between the human, the earth, the sun, and the monad, written in the geometric language of light. That is your light body. Jiva and I refer to this event as our job interview. However it was arranged, it was most likely ourselves from the future. It was a good move because it was and still is the driving inspiration that has us fully committed from that day to this very moment to reverse engineering that experience into an interactive system, a template, a layer by layer reconstruction of the self-generating, self-sustaining human light body. So you see, we are not channeling, we are remembering. Remembering that which is stored in the cerebral cortex of every human being. The memory of themselves prior to the genetic modification of their blueprint. As Terence McKenna puts it, the mind is more powerful than any particle accelerator, more sensitive than any radio receiver or the largest optical telescope, more complete in its grasp of information than any computer. The human body, its voice, its power of locomotion and its imagination is a more than sufficient means for the exploration of any time or energy level in the universe. When you integrate the acceleration of electromagnetic source code information into your being, into your human biocomputational system, you will begin to experience a disassociation from this dualistic fear-based paradigm. Programs that are reliant on the synthetic matrix begin to collapse. This deconstruction makes way for the reconstruction of the true self, the ability to reclaim your symbiotic relationship to Earth, to the solar system, and to self-reference with the eternal constant. It is imperative that you begin to recognize the extent of the experimentation that is being performed on your blueprint. If you doubted that was possible, look around you and register the extent of the present global agenda, what the powers that be are capable of, and the extent to which they are trying to stop you from realizing who you are, because that reveals the full extent of your true identity and the full spectrum of your ability as a masterpiece of design, a fractal aspect of the Mahagaya Tantra of creation, ultimately able to access any time or energy level in the universe. In my next podcast, I will go into the dynamics of the portal in which this event took place and how it is that at these sacred sites all over the planet, portals are created where the light body of Earth, as she manifests as a planetary fractal within the true continuum, touches upon the surface of this reality and coalesces with this dualistic paradigm, opening gateways through which we can move into absolute coherence with her where we can bridge the worlds.